The sun and you and me and all the stars that we can see are moving at a million miles a day. In an outer spiral arm at 40,000 miles an hour of the galaxy we call the Milky Way. Hey guys, Film Crazy Adam here. As per my update from last week, no, two weeks ago, I am going to go see Guardians of the Galaxy. The reason why I didn't see it last week is because I did a two week stint on the road for my current job so that I could have this weekend as a three day weekend off so that I can go down to, so I can have the whole weekend off and go down to Baltimore to Oticon, which I haven't done in a few years, so, and if anyone's going down there, yeah, maybe we'll bump into each other. Anyway, uh, I'm actually going to turn this into a double feature Thursday. Um, as you can see, I've got a very special shirt on. You can guess what movie I'm seeing after Guardians of the Galaxy. But before I get to this movie, let's get to that movie, because I'm going to see Guardians of the Galaxy right now. And my thoughts going into this movie are... I don't... This is one of the rare cases where I actually don't know anything about the source material going into this movie. Because as a nerd, I played a lot of video games and read, you know, read a some comic books and watched a lot of TV, a lot of cartoons. I do research on so many just random things. I'm a curious guy like that. I just research random random stuff. Guardians of the Galaxy, I had literally never heard of them until after the Avengers movie and then you see Thanos on screen and I had seen his picture before. I didn't know his name and it was one of my really good friends who's way more into comics than I will ever be who's like, oh my god, that's Thanos, they're going to bring in the Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm like, Guardians of the Galaxy? Who's that? And so, he didn't really have an answer. I get whatever, we were talking about a lot of stuff. We were excited for the Avengers movie, and we were just talking about that. But anyway, I didn't know anything about the Guardians of the Galaxy, and I still don't know anything about the Guardians of the Galaxy beyond what they tell you in the trailer. That evidently there's five of them. I know who Rocket is, because I've played Marvel vs. Capcom. I don't know who Groot was. I don't know who Star Lord is. I don't know any of these other people. I did the most basic amount of research I did on this movie is basically just the cast list, and it's pretty decked out. Um, it's got Amy Pond from Doctor Who. It's got uh, Zoe. I can't remember her name, but she you know she's the new Uhura. Uh, let's see. It's got Chris Pratt who was Emmett. The special from the Lego movie. It's got Bradley Cooper, Vin Diesel doing voices. So it's got a pretty good cast. It's got uh, John C. Riley, like him, and uh, Demon. Can't remember his last name. But anyway, uh, my thoughts going into this is I don't really have any. I don't know what to expect because, again, this is something that I've done. I have no knowledge of going into it. I am. I have no knowledge. I have no idea what, what I'm going to expect. I have no expectations. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm just I'm just in it for the ride this time. So, let me go see that. I'll be back. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> Saw Guardians of the Galaxy. It was alright. I think this is the most highly anticipated movie of the year so far. Definitely the most highly anticipated movie of the summer. I think at the beginning of the year, like during the Super Bowl when the trailers came out. I can't, no, they didn't have a trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy. At least I don't remember one. I do remember a trailer for Captain America 2. I do remember a trailer for Transformers 4. And I think at the time, when you saw the Dinobots on screen, that was actually pretty epic. And everyone was really stoked at the time. And as time got closer to the movie, everyone just remembered, yeah, but this is a Michael Bay Transformers movie, and we've already seen three of those piles of garbage. This isn't going to be any better. And so, Transformers 4 kind of, like, it might have started with a, with a bit of hype, but it very quickly dropped. This movie kind of started high, or it started low and grew. So, yeah, this was like, I, I'm pretty sure this is the most highly anticipated movie of the year so far. And definitely the most highly anticipated movie this summer. 
And I think it's well de well deserved. It's deserved. I liked it. I have my problems with it, but overall I liked it. It actually was um All right, let's talk about let's talk about the problems with this movie first. Uh before I get into what I like. Usually I do what I liked and what wasn't good about it. I'm actually going to do it in reverse this time and it's going to make more sense. Because the problems while they were there didn't ruin it, at least not for me. Here's what here's the problem. The biggest problem with this movie is that you've got five characters that no one's heard any no, you've got the five people from Guardians of the Galaxy, the other daughter of Thanos, the Xandarians, something prime. Glenn Close as some... Uh, what's her name? Prime? I don't remember. Um, and then you got the main bad guy who I also don't remember and has a lot of face paint on him. And the Infinity Stones. Now, I've heard of the Infinity Stones and I think they go on like a gauntlet, I think. So, they're going that way. And this shows my ignorance of comics. I don't know what the, this gauntlet is. I do know that it exists, but I don't know what it is and how it works. Now I'm just blabbering about things I don't know about. Back to the movie. So you've got these five, six, seven, eight, nine characters. All of them different. Like, that's a lot of people to introduce and explain things about. Like, with X-Men, you have dozens of people. I mean, you can, I mean, you can make that argument. You're like, well, what's, you know, well, you have X-Men and there's dozens of people there. The thing is, with X-Men, they all have the same, it's... It's all under the same umbrella. They're all mutants. And that's all you need to do to explain the X-Men. They're all mutants. They've all got powers. Oh, they're mutants. So, you don't really need to explain much other than what is their mutant power. And there's not a lot of lead-up that goes into it. It's just, oh, this person was born with this ability. Or, you know, when they reach puberty, they have this ability. Guardians of the Galaxy, you have five different... Just the Guardians themselves. You have five different characters. Very very different people. They've all got their own planets of origin. They've all got their own backstory. They've all got, you know, their own character to them. And they've all got their own history. And it's that history that's developed them and made them the character they are. Again, with X-Men, it's a lot simpler. Basically, you know that all of them had a hard time growing up, but they all have powers... So it's a lot easier to explain 12 people, because it's just like, that one has laser vision, that one regenerates, that one is really good at spelling. Um, with this one, with this movie, Guardians of the Galaxy, there's a lot of exposition. It's actually, and I hate exposition when it's done bad, because it's a, it's, it's a sign of a bad filmmaker. Somebody who can't write instead and like work it into... The story. Instead, they have to have it exposited like you're an idiot. You know, like, best example... Yeah, I'm not going into examples, but, um... I was going to use an example from another movie, but whatever. It'd be like... Okay, it'd be like the difference between cinema and theater. Um, the theater, when... For a scene on screen... With, um... For a scene on screen, for a scre scene on screen for movies, you can show a picture of the New York skyline and that it's snowing, and then, or no, better yet, that it's hot out. You see it sweltering. You see the camera cuts to things like you know fire hydrants open and people at a pool, and then like box fans in a window, and it pans the apartment. You see this dude like wearing nothing but boxers, and he's, uh, uh, and you could tell it's hot as balls there. And also there's probably some filtering to make it look more orange, the light more orange, so it looks and feels hot. In a theater, you don't have all that extra stuff. You don't have different camera angles. You just have whatever the guy in the back row can see from there. And you have to paint a picture with what's on screen. So there's a lot of exposition in theater. Like a guy walk, you know, 
same kind of scene where there's a really bad cardboard cutout of New York sky of the New York skyline out out the guy's window. That again, the guy in the back row can barely see. Yeah, this dude's sitting on a couch, and he might be in boxes and uh, uh, but without the context of all those other things that you saw in the in the on screen, you're not quite sure what's going on. And then a guy, you know, somebody else walks in the apartment. And says, wow. Hello, Tom. Isn't it really hot today? Isn't it really hot at 90 degrees today in New York City? That's exposition. And in theater, you need a lot of exposition because you can't show it with other with the other things that we do in movies. Does that make sense? Good. So, in Guardians of the Galaxy, we don't know who any of these characters are. They've never been referenced, and they're a little bit of obscure if you don't read comics. You know, everyone's heard of Spider-Man. You might not know everything about him, but you've heard of him. You've heard of Iron Man, you've heard of Superman, you've heard of Batman, you've heard of The Flash. Again, all characters that everyone, you've just by being alive in America, you've heard of these characters. You might not know a whole lot about them. Hell, you might not even know their, their secret identity's name. But you've heard of them. How many of you, honest to God, heard of Guardians of the Galaxy, any of them, before you saw this movie? And Rocket doesn't count because he was in Marvel vs. Capcom for all you video game players out there. Seriously, I mean, they're so obscure. I knew nothing about this going into it. So, at the very least, the filmmakers realized this and realized that we have to kind of give an explanation who these characters are, and so they did it with exposition. The characters talk about themselves to other people. They just exposit what they do. They exposit who they are and how they got there. Uh, you know, Rocket explains exactly who he is and how he came to be. The daughter of Thanos, the one with green skin, explains who she is. Um, there's conversations with other people like, oh, these are the daughters of Thanos. You know, this is, you know, this one. And like three different times, they explain how um, the girl with green skin explains that she's an assassin. And that she's like genetically and robotically and, and um, modified to be a great assassin. Like, she explains it at one point, and two other people explain it during the course of the movie. R um, Rocket, I don't know why, but at one point, I can't remember why, but at one point he just explains why he is, how he was created, and who he was. Star-Lord, same thing, he just tells people, like, yeah, this is me. The, um, the other guy, the bad guy, um, Tyrannus, no. Dracon? I don't remember. Anyway... I'm kind of, I, I guess I, I kind of got off on a tangent there, and I went a few weird places. But anyway, that is my biggest problem with this movie, is that there was a lot of exposition. Some of it was handled better than others, where it actually kind of did work seamlessly into the movie. But, like I said, with that green skin girl, three different times, three different people told, told us about her and who she was and how she got there. Um, other than that, it didn't... I still say that this was a good watch. I I'll, I'll, hmm. I want to say it's a good movie, because I enjoyed it. But from a reviewer's standpoint, you know, i got to be fair. This was an okay movie in terms of quality. Like, if you're not a, a video game fan, I mean, not a video, if you're not a comic fan, and if you don't like action, then you're not going to like this movie. Because there's a lot that you kind of got to suspend your disbelief and just roll with it. Like, the ships when they make that grid, Thanos, the, uh, you know, the Infinity Stone and what it does. They didn't really explain it too well, actually. They just kind of said it's a big, lone rock that, that disintegrates things. Um, they didn't really explain Groot, now that I think about it. Which, by the way, Groot and Rocket, two favorite characters in this whole movie. I love the character of Rocket. Bradley Cooper did a really good job voice acting, and the animators did a really good job of animating. Vin Diesel, as Groot, by the way, I think did all of his lines in half an hour. Uh, he's basically, in many ways, he's kind of like a Pokemon, where Pokemon can only say their name. Groot just says, I am Groot, the entire time. There's one time where he says, we are Groot, but the, for the entire movie, I think he says, like, I am Groot, like, ten times. And he, I mean, there's yell. I mean, he yells a lot, and he's hitting people. Ah! But yeah, I think Vin Diesel did all of his uh, voice work in like half an hour for this movie. 
Anyway, um, where was I going with this? All right, the movie. I'll upgrade it to good. It was a good movie. The, again, it, the story was there. The characters were there. Yeah, the characters were there. Like, they weren't just two-dimensional characters. They had depth to them. You didn't, we didn't have a lot of time to see them evolve, but there were, they were definitely three-dimensional characters. So I like that about it. I like that in all the chaos, in all the crazy, in all the stuff that's happening, they were able to, like, give some substance to these characters, which is one reason why I can't say that this exposition was a bad thing. Um, they just didn't, I mean, there's, the problem is that there's so much with these characters. They got so much backstory, we can't fit it all in this movie. And this movie was only like an hour and 40 minutes, I think? So, that was a bit surprising to me. I was like, hmm. Not that I felt cheated by the length of the movie. In fact, I think it was the perfect length. Because if, if it got too much longer, if they spent too much time talking about themselves, it would start to get boring. It's this weird balance, and so like, I think this movie did it right. I'm, as I'm talking more about it, I'm like, I'm like, huh, this movie is better and gets better and better the more I talk about it. Because... And it all comes back, I, I know I've said it like eight times, like, to the exposition. The, I wish they didn't do exposition, but without it, I wouldn't know anything about anything. I wouldn't know who these characters are, I wouldn't know what these items are, I wouldn't know what he's doing, I wouldn't know why they're doing it. There is so much exposition in this movie, but every bit of it is needed to understand the story as it's progressing. You know, why is this guy attacking this planet? Well, it's a good thing he just told us why he's attacking the planet. Oh, who are these characters? Oh, that's who. Good thing they just told us or else I'd have no clue. But once you understand it, and I and again, this only works with the context of this movie. Only with the context of this movie. Because there's tons of movies. Uh, Last Airbender is the one that jumps to mind where there is nothing but exposition. I think that's why this movie's alright, because... Sorry about that. Anyway, it all comes down to the exposition again. And this movie did it right. Airbender did everything wrong, where that movie was 100% exposition, where they exposited what they were doing every single second. This movie had exposition, and then it had dialogue, and it had actual storytelling. So it was, you know, I'm not, again, I'm not 100% thrilled that there was so much exposition, but I think they did just the way they did it. They're like, we're going to try and work this into a conversation. I mean, we're shoehorning it in there. Make no mistake. And it's going to sound a little bit unnatural, but they need this information or they're not going to understand what's going on. And we're going to keep the exposition to a minimum. You know, that way they don't realize they're being exposited and they're not, we're not beating it over the head with them and there's actual some storytelling and some dialogue in there. So... So as much as as much as I don't like it, it was necessary, and I think they did a good job of keeping it down to a minimum. Other than that, you know, so that right there was the biggest problem in the movie. But you needed it in the movie. You needed that exposition, or you 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 were gonna be lost. You had no idea who these people were. You don't know what they're doing. Why are they so different? What? Why are they from different planets? It's just so much to grasp, and so they needed to spoon feed you a little bit of information. This is happening because of this. This guy is over this guy is angry because of this. Um, you know, he talks like this because he's from this planet. Uh, Groot is Groot. So So uh, actually this is going to be a kind of quick review because that was kind of the, the my biggest beef with it, but again, you needed it and they did it relatively well. So well, for me, for a lot of people, they probably didn't notice it. For me, it was a little bit distracting, but I understand that it was necessary, and it didn't ruin the movie. And again, I think, you know, they, they kept it at a good length. It was only an hour and 40 minutes, but I didn't feel cheated. It told a story. It explained who these characters are. And I didn't feel like... I'm, the worst is when you sit through a movie... The worst is when you're not getting your, you feel like you're not getting your money's worth. Like, you paid the ten bucks and you're sitting through like a two hour movie, two and a half hour movie, and you just want it to end. You're like, oh god, when are we going to get to the credits so I can leave? I'm so bored. You know, that happened in Transformers 4. 
among other movies. So, I'm glad that it was at this length. I'm, I'm, overall, I liked it. Like I said, check it out. This is one of those where I'm giving a thumbs up. I'm saying check it out. It was a pretty good movie. If you're a casual comic book fan, you might not like it. Like, you might go see Spider-Man because you know who Spider-Man is. You know who Iron Man is. So you'll check those out. But for someone who's not really a comic book fan, maybe not. Um, yeah, if you don't like comic books, if you don't like action, don't go see this movie. Other than that, it was a pretty good movie. I think it was a good watch. I'll pick it up when it comes out on DVD. Again, I loved, Ro I loved Rocket. He was the best part of this movie. Go see it just because of Rocket. Oh, side note, the voice actors in this, Bradley Cooper and Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel, I think, has a very, very recognizable voice, but when you reduce him to four words, uh, it seems a little bit of a waste of talent. Bradley Cooper doesn't have a super recognizable voice. He was great, by the way. He was awesome as, as, as Rocket. I loved him as Rocket. But, uh, you know, like Eddie Murphy has a really recognizable voice. Samuel Jackson has a really recognizable voice. Now I feel like an idiot because I, I I thought of like ten voice actors or ten people who've done voice work, and I'm like, oh yeah, everyone knows who they are. Antonio Banderas has a very recognizable voice. Uh, Mel Gibson actually has a kind of recognizable voice. John Goodman has a has a recognizable voice. Bradley Cooper has a pretty much has a pretty regular every 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 guy kind of voice. So it's like. Not that it was a waste of talent, because again, I, I really thought he was great, but it's kind of like, I don't, re you, you don't recognize his voice. You know, the other people have like really recognizable voices. So I guess I don't know where I'm going with this. Like, am I mad that they used Bradley Cooper? No, I love that. I loved uh, what he brought to the role. But he, um, am I mad that he just doesn't have a recognizable voice? I don't know. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I'm rambling. Anyway, go see Guardians of the Galaxy. I thought it was pretty good. It, it, it was definitely worth the price of admission. It was definitely a fun ride. Um, the thing at the end of the credits. A nod, I guess? I don't think... I hope they're not going to do anything with that character. Well, not that I hope. I just don't see what the point would be. Anyway, I got stuff to do. I'm going to see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles later. Uh, we'll see how that works out. Laters!